Boeing 737 MAX updates, Airbus A330 Neo delays, and Etihad Airways to launch new routes are all the focus for today's proceedings, and why not begin with Etihad, who are gearing up to launch to new locations after a very solid performance across the month of September. During the summer holidays, which just recently reached their end, Etihad saw 1.6 million passengers pass through their aircraft doors. This across the many services that were put forward. The substantial figure actually represents an increase of around 400,000 year over year and reflects the airline's focus on not just expansion, but yes, the continued rebuild of its network. At the end of 2024, representing the year to date, Etihad says it's been able to carry 13.6 million passengers, that an increase of 3.5 million, the direction that any company wants to see their business head. Increasing the overall available fleet has also been a focus this year, and the airline has done this successfully. That said, Etihad has still struggled, like many others, to secure the aircraft it wants on time. These struggles stem from manufacturers' inability to deliver planes on time, due to many issues, whether supply chain or just internal problems, and that will be a topic of focus in the next part of this video. At the end of September, though, Etihad said it had increased its fleet by 16 units year over year, reaching 95. By increasing the fleet, the airline has also been able to either increase its services to existing locations in the form of an upgaging, or just launch to new markets totally. The number of passenger destinations has increased from 68 to 76. However, expansion remains a key part of the airline's ambitions moving forward, with its CEO announcing that this avenue remains part of the focus. While new destinations are slated to come shortly, more locations are expected to be added as 2025 progresses, and obviously as more aircraft are delivered. Etihad is continuing to pursue Journey 2030 ambitions, which aims to respond to demand and increase the airline's presence across the Middle East and the broader world through fleet and network expansion. That a Middle Eastern carrier can be encouraged by positive results across this year and also recent ones following the pandemic, hoping to build on this as it looks to double key elements of the business. Now, over to aircraft delays. Malaysia Airlines has become the latest to be hit by bad news concerning delays. The carrier, you may know, was expected to take delivery of its first A330 Neo last month. However, following fresh delays, the delivery date was then pushed back to this month of October. Well, Airbus won't be able to make the October 2024 delivery schedule and has informed Malaysia Airlines that a November timeframe is now more realistic. The plane maker states that the initial delay resulted from a failure to test the interior seats, which overly complicated matters. Unfortunately, seat complications are going to hardly come as a surprise. This is one of the many avenues that is impacting manufacturers just like Airbus, whether on their terms of having issues, say, during installation, or just generally problems that are preventing planes from coming together. Following the latest delay, Malaysia Airlines' latest forecasting, that is that they will postpone the launch of the A330neo on commercial operation until November 25-26, when the debut is slated for Melbourne, Australia. The pushback in flying to Melbourne to reflect the revised delivery time frame isn't just going to hit this market, because now Malaysia Airlines says all subsequent dates for commencement of A330neo flights will obviously be pushed back to reflect this latest hiccup. Thankfully, a delay such as this will not hurt the flight schedule too much. The airline says it is going to be able to cope. However, the hope is that the delivery time frame doesn't balloon out even further, which has become all too common. I think I've said it before, and I'll certainly say it again, that it does seem like with aircraft deliveries, you really don't know when you're going to get the plane until it is quite literally in your hands. To say that Malaysia Airlines is frustrated with the latest set of delays involving this new aircraft 
prototype is an understatement. These major airlines do rely on new aircraft to help fuel growth ambitions, elevate customer service levels, and obviously replace aging types that may no longer be performing to an optimal manner. By not getting aircraft on time, Malaysia Airlines risks losing out to competition, not entering their new era sooner, and retaining older planes to mitigate capacity losses. Malaysia Airlines, though, isn't alone in facing delivery delays from Airbus, which in themselves is frustrating, but equally it is battling complications in taking delivery of the 737 MAX from Boeing. Pairing these very two struggles together puts the airline in a position where it's trying to build for a solid 2025, but consistent complexities are making it so much more challenging. For example, Emirates President Sir Tim Clark recently stated that Boeing's timelines regarding deliveries are now meanless because he believes there is a consistent failure to meet them, so why does any timeline have any backing until it is actually delivered? Facing delivery delays are hardly a new problem for companies, and while I know it is becoming such a common topic, it's because it's so fundamentally important, and with every passing week, you're having new executives come out and really discuss on a public level just how much it's hurting them. Ryanair came out and expressed that it's the worst they've seen in so many decades, and there isn't an end in sight, with problems continuing. It makes running an airline even harder than it already is. Over to Delta, they're expecting their first 737-10 to arrive in 2026 per a new filing that was reported it at the closure of the September 2024 quarter, announcing it had also amended purchase agreements with Boeing. 20 units are expected to be delivered in 2026, this considered to be the first batch, and then the remaining 80 units will be delivered in the remaining years ahead, resulting in 100 total MAX jets flying in the short to medium haul mission. Guidance on the 737-10 arriving in now a little under two years is a change from from earlier reporting by Bloomberg that you may recall came in early 2024, which stated that Delta was expecting a first delivery in 2027. That report was actually citing the CEO of Delta, who really stated that there is a great deal of uncertainty on the certification and the state that Boeing found themselves in. Remember, that's early 2024 comments, and if I've got to be honest to you, and I'm sure you probably would agree, now as 2025 approaches, Boeing doesn't necessarily find itself in too much better of a position. While it is implementing core safety and culture turnaround practices, we already know that it's going to take up to five years to fully implement, and as for everything else going on, doesn't feel like there's much end in sight. But Delta believes that per their guidance, a 2026 timeframe seems attainable. Despite the Max series' strong presence right around the world, you have to remember that it could be far bigger, because there are still other variants that are yet to be approved. And don't worry if sometimes that slips your mind, it has been a long-winded process. In fact, there are still two variants, from the 737 to the 737-10, that don't have a timeline for their approval. Unfortunately, following those two Max crashes, not only did we see a colossal amount of life lost, but Boeing's remaining variants that had yet to be certified were basically just thrown into the unknown, and this has now continued to the midway point of the 2020s, with little to no information on when the units will be certified, with seemingly something always worse going on. Thanks for watching, leave your thoughts down below in the comments, take care, be safe, and I'll see you tomorrow. And we'll fly.